Now, uh, to other news here, Nigeria has joined a $100 million global partnership to leverage artificial intelligence to solve some of the most critical challenges in the country. According to the Ministry of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, this partnership was agreed at the Made in Global AI Safety Summit in the United Kingdom. At the summit, the Minister for Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy says AI offers an opportunity to seamlessly address some pressing social and business challenges. The partners at the summit had agreed to fund safe and responsible AI projects for development around the world. The $100 million partnership will initially focus on sub-Saharan Africa and will then support local expertise and technological capacity on the continent. Right, to discuss more on this and other issues, of course, including efforts to transform Nigeria's digital economy, we have in the studio the Minister of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, Dr. Bosun Tijani. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on News Night tonight. Well, of course, we have a, a number of questions to ask you, but let's start with this uh, $100 million global uh, partnership. Exactly what is Nigeria bringing to that uh, purse? And what does Nigeria really stand to gain from it? I, I think uh, it, you know, it's something we have to be excited about. Uh, what we're bringing to the pot is not necessarily cash, it's actually our creativity. Uh, so leaders globally uh, and nations globally have been investing in uh, artificial intelligence for years. For those who have been following this phenomenon, it's really that next level that we get with uh, the capability that digital technologies offer us, the ability to collect and analyze, but also process and make sense of a, a huge set of data sets. You know, something that the human mind cannot comprehend nor, nor, nor solve. You know, if you take data sets on, uh, say, kids giving birth to in Nigeria since inception, you know, what do you do with that data set? What can the human mind do with it? So the, the evolution of, of digital technology has got into a stage where we can actually collect those data, we can store them, we can process them, and we can make sense out of them. But the challenge is that historically, uh, Global South countries have not been investing in this phenomenon. But the phenomenon in itself is now matured. We've all seen what generative AI came up with in about 12 months, where you can literally ask generative AI to write anything for you. You know, things that you can't probably finish writing in two days, generative AI can write it in two seconds. But the challenge is that for us not investing in it, it means that we can't make the most of it for development. And it has massive potentials. But at the same time, it also has its own vices as well, where it can be used to mimic people. It can be used to compromise society. So for nations to continue to survive in the world where artificial intelligence is now everywhere around us, we must participate in governance uh, structure in terms of how it is managed. We must ensure that we give opportunity to the creative people in our society to actually think of how it can be applied to create uh, great ideas. So this partnership is focused on funding new ideas for global south countries particularly starting with africa so those creative people who believe they can help us apply ai in really smart ways will be able to benefit from it and you know that's the fear uh, of a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. not just nigeria all over the world mm -hmm. and it's a good thing that you are all uh, in the uk mm -hmm. uh, to talk more about uh, the safety of this uh, uh, you know new wonder yeah. that uh, we're all uh, are looking to get now speak to us pretty much what nigeria stands to gain and you put into perspective what you call uh, the three million technical talent mm -hmm. I think what we stand again, if you're talking about artificial intelligence, yes. 3 million technical talent is a it's separate conversation, but there's an element of it which is, which is tied. Uh, but what we stand to gain is that we already have young Nigerians building artificial intelligence solutions, you know, even it's without amazing. significant support. Yeah. So, but for government and this government in particular, we, we have that understanding that this is a phenomenon that we can't look away from. We can't say because we're an African country, it, you know, it's not something that is important to us. For the kind of problems that we want to address within this government, it is extremely going to be important that we mainstream the application of artificial intelligence. Because without data and knowledge of your people, your properties, your society, there's so much you can't do. When you talk about security, there's so much data can help you do by studying and understanding your environment, you can digest these things better. And the most important thing about artificial 
intelligence, it helps with allocation of resources as well. Because we don't have all the resources in the world that we need to actually develop our society the way we would like to develop it. Even if we say, let's go for it and put all our resources into it it's never going to be enough. So smart appropriation of resources is also important. And this is where things like artificial intelligence will come into play. So what we stand to gain is you're going to see more people building AI-based solutions that has been applied in spaces like agriculture, in, in public health, for instance. You will see more of that. In education, AI is actually changing the game globally because you can see things that teachers can't teach uh, fast enough being now supported by artificial intelligence too, where a child is learning and they, they're struggling with certain things. AI can see where they're struggling and suggest you know, ways in which they should be thinking about the solution or the challenge at hand. And those things will lead us to where we want to be faster. And we've seen this development whenever we apply technology. We talk about Nollywood entertainment enough, a lot, but we don't talk enough about the role that technology play to amplify our position mm. in those areas. You know, the fact that our content, uh, whether it was during DVD, could travel on DVD to so many parts of the world, whether it's in the Caribbean, the rest of Africa, that gave us the platform for us to be able to export, which is what led to the growth of that sector. Right. When you talk about music, for instance, entertainment, you can't deny what you know, the distribution channels is done to us. You can't deny what social media is done, Instagram is done. This is what technology does in society. And if we're very intentional, there's a lot more we can do with it. Uh, fantastic. It would mm. be nice to, you know, at this point, mm. get your, I mean, run us through your strategy, mm -hmm. you know, for your ministry. Yeah. And then tie it in with the three, uh, three million technical, technical talent. Uh, talent. Yeah. How do you hope to achieve that? Any... Uh, time frame within which to accomplish that? Yeah, I think for someone like myself coming from the industry, you know, I'm extremely lucky to be within this government. That's, that's one thing I can say, because we have a precedent that is very pro-business. If you sit in the cabinet, there's only one rhetoric, which is the fact that we have to do whatever we need to do to diversify the Nigerian economy. We have to do whatever we need to do to improve the quality of lives for people. That's the rhetoric, in, which is why we had the retreat that we just finished on Friday, where every minister has had to sign a bond you know, I'm sure we've never heard of that before in Nigeria, where ministers are actually signing bonds. And it made it very clear that we're going to be tracked upon these things. These things were written down by quarters, right, where you're checking in and ensuring that you can see what's happening to your target. If you're not meeting your target, why are you not meeting it? And, you know, people are actually scared <laughs> because the honest truth is that you will be tracked, right? So for us, what we're saying is that we're tapping into that energy to say in, Historically, we know that technology is a tool that nations used to develop. Whether you think of first, second, third industrial revolution, if you look back in the US where ordinary rail technology was responsible for how goods could be moved from one location to the other, to when we could do large scale manufacturing instead of using hand to manufacture. So if Nigeria is ever gonna develop, we understand that we need to mainstream the application of technology. But for us to do that, we came up with five key pillars that is guiding the work we do. The first one is what we've called know-how, which means we need to have a strong workforce that can help apply technology if anything serious is gonna happen. But also because there's a gap in technology workforce globally, we think because of our population, of our 60% of, of, of our population being under the age of 25, mm -hmm. that Nigeria can actually also become a net exporter of technology talent. So that's the first pillar. How do we drive more knowledge? You know, how do we drive more people knowing? How do we invest in more research? in technologies that we want to apply. The second one is what we've called policy, where we start to reimagine our policy as not just a tool to regulate and stifle opportunity, but open up more of our economies or more of our sectors for technological innovation to happen, whether it's agriculture or public health. So a lot of partnership between uh, ministries there to ensure that we can actually drive the application of technology. Then the third one is what we call infrastructure. We don't talk about this enough. Nigeria's telecommunications sector is actually one of the best on the continent, right? People talk about data being expensive. It's still one of the cheapest in the world. Of course, we know how, it is, how important it is to our people. And we need to continue to look for ways to improve the quality. But we want to also ensure that broadband penetration in Nigeria is, is in, in critical part of the country. Okay. So we're aiming to, to go on a target of 95,000 kilometers of fiber being laid. That's the target that has been set for Nigeria to cover the country with fiber optic cable. We want to achieve 70% of that in these first four years. That's, that's the target. And the fourth goal, uh, which is we've called innovation and entrepreneurship, is understanding that even if we do the first pillar well, the second pillar and third pillar really well, 
without innovators and entrepreneurs, we can't make gains out of it. So we're increasing the pool of local capital, patient capital that startups can access, which is what this high dice program, which is almost $600 million, that's where it falls. We want to be able to invest in our own people. And lastly is yeah. that if we invest in these people, it's not enough for them to produce things that we consume locally. We've seen it in entertainment, you know, mm -hmm. like I said. If they can also export their solution, they will bring in foreign earnings mm -hmm. into the economy. And that's how we begin to strengthen our economy. Yeah, Mr. Bosun Tijani, we're almost out of time, but quickly let me bring this in, because uh, listening to you, mm -hmm. it tells one thing, that there's a symbiotic relationship between your ministry and virtually Absolutely. all ministries. Absolutely. And how you go about that yeah. will, will be something that many Nigerians will be excited about. <laughs> but quickly here, another thing has to do with uh, fraud. Mm -hmm. Cyber fraud mm -hmm. daily. People mm -hmm. have been mm -hmm. swindled, mm -hmm. especially even Nigerians living abroad, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. fellow Nigerians or yeah. fellow Africans or some yeah. Asians somewhere. But again, how can you work with our banks to the extent that small businesses yeah. that uh, run, you know, under such, you know, shady deals are uncovered? See, see, what I'll say on this is that our, our glasses are full. Good, right? Be because the honest truth is, when you look at the progress that we've made. We started off with what we call the BVN, which was tied to our bank account, which meant a lot of people could be ID'd, but not everyone is in the financial system. But the last government came up with something that is called the NIN number, the NIN, NIN yeah. which now we have 90% of adults being registered on that platform. What you are talking about can only be achieved when you have a decent ID system. And that's what we've lacked for a long time. So we're now at a position where we're saying, can we harmonize all the different ID systems? If we triangulate all of these ID systems, including the National Population Commission database, mm -hmm. we can actually properly ID our people. And once you can ID your people, not only are you going to have the opportunity to be able to mitigate or reduce fraud, which, is, which exists everywhere in the world, not only yeah. in Nigeria, yeah. even in the West, but you're also going to understand who your people are. You can serve them better. Our biggest problem is not just you know, corruption or misappropriation of funds. Our biggest problem is actually we do not know enough of our people. And that is a priority for this administration. I mean, it's so yeah. exciting to hear you say that, uh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Minister, because yeah. only last week mm -hmm. we were told, I think it was the World Health Organization that mm -hmm. came up with that report, yeah. that only 43 or so percent yeah. of Nigerian you know, babies born in Nigeria yeah. are actually registered. Yeah. I wonder how your ministry would come in there to ensure that you know, every birth, maybe even death, yeah. is... You know, so, so there's actually a new there's actually a new committee in government that has been formed. I just got my letter today where the National Population Commission is part of it, and they've they've really had so they've added people from different critical ministries, including interiors, my ministry. I'm part of that committee, and part of what we're focusing on because while I said through NIN we've been able to register at least 90% of adults. Our biggest gap is still in newborns and kids in primary school. You know, because you know, for newborns, that should be automatic, but mm -hmm. there's something we can do there to, to really plug that gap and make it, make it automatic. But the, for those who are already in primary and secondary school, because of their age, they're a lot more difficult for you to onboard and register. So we have to be really smart around how we do that without compromising the fact that these are young people. We're not going to get them to go kill somewhere the way we did with NIN. Right? So there's a lot of conversation now going on in government right. to plug that gap. The World Bank is working heavily with this government to ensure that ID is in place. If we can fix our identity system, which this government is committed to fixing, I think Nigerians will start to see a different country because you cannot develop if you don't have your, your proper ID system. And identity is not just about individuals, it's also about properties as well. You, right. need, you need good identity system, which is why part of the NIPO's current mission is also addressing, can we identify each property in the country? When you can do this, you're on a, you're on a path to prosperity. Because that's I, how I'm you can you appropriate clearly, your, your, your ministry is the octopusy ministry. But again, quickly, if we can do this in 60 seconds, uh, <laughs> the outlook of your ministry in the next four years. In the next four years, I think, like I said during the retreat, uh, two things I see, uh, which we've not talked about in this interview, is the fact that this government, from the president to the head of service to minister of finance, we're all bullish about the fact that we need to improve the quality of public service. And technology is a major way of doing that. Historically, we've invested in technology, but these things don't speak to themselves. So you're going to see that change. You will see a Nigeria where the public services uh, that you consume are now digitally enabled, which is going to reduce the cost and make it more effective. That's one thing you're going to see in four years. The other thing is that I personally believe that Nigeria will become a tech nation 
a nation where people look to for technology talent. It's been done in India, something quite similar to India. We have the population for it. We have people who are smart, who are digital native, naturally keen to use technology. And the world will turn to us because when you look at the West, their population is aging but also reducing as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Let's talk another 30 seconds out of you. <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, okay, so. Uh, let's, you're going to give it to me. Yes, thank I, you. I'm going to have to. <laughs> going to have to leave it. But you need a buy-in of the private sector, don't you? Oh, we do. And, and historically, historically, let's be honest, the private sector in Nigeria is very involved in government. Let's not pretend about that. Right. Uh, there's nothing that government is doing. In this country, historically, that private sector is not part of. It's not historically been part of. Fantastic. Mm. Well, that's a fun place for us to leave it, uh, Dr. Thank you so much. Boston Tijani. Thank a you. Pleasure. <laughs>